I've said this in another video that when you see a man carrying a pitcher of water go into the house now in esoterics and mysticism the house is you, you your body is the house you are the house so to go into the house is to go inside yourself but he says when you go into the house he will meet you there so the problem you have is that in ancient times and if you if you read a bit of history and about unfortunate aspects of class separation and sex separation and sexism it was unheard of for a man to carry out the duty of a woman in in the time that the bible is the setting of jesus life a man would not carry a pitcher of water now that information's there for us to find out on earth. We can find that out. We don't have to wonder. That's just part of it. We understand cultural and societal differences and that was one of them. Men didn't carry pitchers of water. So why did he say it? Well, we've just gone in to the age of Aquarius. And inside the age of Aquarius, and if we all know the star sign of Aquarius is a man carrying a pitcher of water. So, it's quite late at night and I'm not finding a lot of time to do any, I'm not finding a lot of time for much other than Feather's Tale at the moment to be honest. I've had so much going on with construction, uh, new children, our security problems and then starting the new farm and everything you know, it's a lot. It's a big job to manage the construction of a community, the running of a community and the well-being of the children. 500 children outside of here. It takes a lot of effort. But it's killing me that I'm not finding time to talk because I feel valuable stuff is slipping. Time is valuable and time is slipping by where I could be speaking about things that are important to me and I believe that which I find important to me and resonates with me is important to the well-being of the earth and humanity. This is something I believe about that which the universe taught me, if you like. So. so today, well, not today, the last few weeks I've had a bit of a thing going on in my mind about Jesus and the thing I have is that I have friends here who see Jesus as the Son of God and I do too let me clear this up I see Jesus as a Son of God but based on the language of ancient Greece it was never written he never, he never spoke and said, I am the Son of God. He always said, I am a Son of God. And that's been on my mind a lot because th that simple switch of words from ancient Greek, from Hebrew to ancient Greek to modern English that we're using, is causing a lot of problems. I've been demonized as someone who's the Antichrist when... I say these things and for me I understand why because there are parts of the Bible that say unless a man admit that Jesus came in the flesh that then he is the spirit of an antichrist. Well I admit that the Christ came in the flesh many many times but I admit that Jesus was one of if not the most spectacular time when a Christ came in the flesh. His teachings have lived for millennia, well, for ages. He was one of the greatest sons of God to ever walk this earth. But he was a son of God. And I don't think he was the, I think he was a. 
And if you believe he was the son of God, I don't want to challenge you and argue with you. It's fine for me that you believe he was the one and only. And I hope for you it's fine that I say that he is one of many sons of God. But he was quite possibly the greatest ever. I don't know fully. I wasn't around then. But all I know is if we're going off the written words in the book, then the older translations of the book, he said in his own words, I am a son of God. He never said thee. So I'll stick to what I have with regards to my my learnings in the persons who have taught me in life about literature and theology and language. That which I know, and if I'm wrong and I get proven that in ancient Greek he was saying that he is the, the then I'll hold my hands up. But for now, if we're going to say it's the words of the book that determine it, I have to go with what I know. And what I know is that it said that he is a son of God. But what that does is it changes a lot of things for me as well because it makes me think, well, where are the others? And are the others potentially people I'm walking with? And the more I work in what I work with here and the more I am with people who want to assist those in need, then I can't help but see the characteristics of Jesus as you would see him in your mind's eye shining through 99% of the people who I'm working with and through the vast majority of people who reach out to us online. It's in there. It's in there. And the thing is, I think at this current time on earth, I think one of the reasons it's in there was spoken by Jesus. As many of you know, I actually follow the teachings of Christ very strongly. A lot of what he taught resonates so deeply with me that he is one of the greatest teachers I've ever had are the teachings that he left behind on this planet via those men that followed him. Now, one of the things that he said was, and I've said this in another video, that when you see a man carrying a pitcher of water go into the house. Now, in esoterics and mysticism, the house is you, you, your body is the house, you are the house. So to go into the house is to go inside yourself. But he says, when you go into the house, he will meet you there. So the problem you have is that in ancient times, and if you, if you read a bit of history and about unfortunate aspects of class separation and sex separation and sexism. It was unheard of for a man to carry out the duty of a woman in, in the time that the Bible is the setting of Jesus' life. A man would not carry a pitcher of water. Now that information is there for us to find out on earth. We can find that out. We don't have to wonder. That's just part of it. We understand cultural and societal differences and that was one of them. Men didn't carry pitchers of water. So why did he say it? Well, we've just gone in to the age of Aquarius. And inside the age of Aquarius, and if we all know the star sign of Aquarius is a man carrying a pitcher of water. So if Jesus was saying, when you go into the age of Aquarius, go into your house, go into yourself, and he will meet you there. My fear is that many people are not going into their house in prayer and meditation to meet the Christ in the higher levels of consciousness. Earth, water, air, fire, new mind. They're not going in and raising themselves up to meet him. Which means the Christ mind can't be born within them. And if the Christ mind can be born within us, and we can all touch it, if all men have the chance, and women, I say men is a representative of man and woman, but if all men and women have the opportunity to touch the mind of Christ internally, then that information needs to be out on the planet. It has to be out on the planet. And believe me, I stand in a place right now where that information is so needed. 
and I don't know how it works fully if someone is too far gone and they're too far away from the mind of Christ can they ever reach there but I know that Jesus said all persons can be forgiven so perhaps and I say this as a man who's the guardian of 10 special needs children here 10 one of which just two weeks ago was nearly kidnapped by men who follow a dark religion, a religion that Jesus would say is following Satan. And their goal was a want to do harm to those children in return for physical, material gain from whichever spirit they're calling out to. What if every child was taught that by going inside themselves they can reach the mind of Christ? Does that mean that humanity stands a chance that that negative energy that can express itself through our fellow man could potentially be abolished forever? Is there a chance if we teach our children from birth, just as we teach them to speak English, just as we teach them mathematics, just as we teach them to speak Chinese, wherever you are in the world, that we teach our children that they can go inside themselves and they too can find the mind of Christ? A state of being where you can't even find justice in bringing harm to any living sentient being on the planet. If we taught that as second nature, what would happen to the planet? I know what happened to me since I went inside myself, since I went into my house. As the words of Jesus said, when the man with the pitcher of water comes, I went into my house and I meditated and I raised myself up and I met the Christ mind in the higher levels of consciousness. And it was the Christ mind that led me to where I am today. It was that peace, that love that brought me to where I was. Because I couldn't bear the, fact, the thought that there were so many that didn't know this feeling that I was feeling. And I was so honoured and privileged that I touched this feeling that I knew two things. One thing, I have to share that which I've touched with the world, somehow. And the other thing, that because I felt so good and peaceful in myself, even in very strenuous and difficult and challenging situations, I could still find that peace. Then I should use that to go into a challenging, a challenging situation into a difficult situation and to help to help those that are nowhere near that feeling that I was gifted with by going within myself and seeking the mind of Christ seeking Christ which I wasn't sure what I was seeking at the time but be sure that's what I did find and a, Buddha, a Buddhist would say I found Nirvana and It doesn't matter what language you use or which way you put it, you will find a deep nourishing love inside yourself if you go in and seek it. If as I read the Bible in a way where the man Yeshua, Jesus was, was crucified. Now, crucifixion is a terrible thing to imagine happening to a human being. But I always think that these words are written in a way that must portray something important to all people. And the fifth wound told me that the five senses must die. They must be crucified in all people for them to raise up to God. And this is what all of us on the planet need to seek to do. Because eventually when other people who have known and loved you see you and they say, how are you doing this? How have you gone? In my example, how have you gone from being someone who had severe depression? How have you gone from someone who couldn't manage very simple aspects of emotional and spiritual life? 
how have you gone from doing that to being someone who is able to build what I've built and support what I've su and support who I support with the children? How is what a is asked now? If enough people do it, because they find the mind of Christ, because they surrender, and God works this magic is the only word I can find that is barely suitable to acknowledge that which he has done through my life and in front of me and around me. If enough people do it and enough people find that beauty and that magic and that, that help and that assistance from God, then other people will want it too. Because people around me, who I've known a lot of my life, they've begun to want it as well because they've watched and said, what's he doing different? And all I've done different is I've given myself to God and said, you know better than me. You do this and I'll follow. I'm yours. Imagine if every child and every person could start doing that. It would be like a virus that spread across the world where everyone would be hungry. Hungry for the mind of Christ, hungry for service, hungry to be like these people that are the centre point of all religions. Who are there to set an example for you to head toward, not for you to call to, to come and fix it for you. They're there as an example for you to say, that's a good human being. Let me try and be like them, because up to now I've not done so well. And that was my experience. And this is how I took from viewing persons like the Buddha and, and Jesus. So if enough people go in, at this time as we're in the age of, age of Aquarius, enough people go within, because the man with the pitcher of water is here. Jesus told you if you're Christian, go inside your house, go inside yourself, and meet Christ in the higher levels of your mind, in the levels of consciousness that we call air and fire, theatre in science. Go and meet him and see if we can create a domino effect for humanity where the rest of humanity wants to meet that, that energy too. Because the more people who go out and do it, the more people become inspired to want to do it as well. And that's what's needed. It's not about riding the coattails of a messenger. It's not about riding the coattails of a, of a messiah. It's about doing what they instruct to do. Jesus, the teacher, instructed us to do what we could. And his instructions are often very clear, but some are in parable, and he told you this. We go out and do what we can do. People will, people will follow. People will be inspired. And perhaps we genuinely can genuinely can see a, a victory on earth where for once we start to head towards a point where suffering is something for the history books where people say I wish I was a around in the age where p humanity was working on the eradication of suffering through inequality and poverty and it's a long way off but and the saying I use frequently in my work is you don't have to see the whole staircase, just take the first step. And the first step, if you believe in the words of Christ, is to go into your house and in the language that that book is written, the house is your body. And you do it when the man with the pitcher of water comes and men didn't carry pitchers of water in the ancient times. So it's now the age of Aquarius, you go into your house and you will meet Christ. You will. I was a normal man without God. And I went into my house and I found him. I found Christ. I found that higher place in myself. And it led me and it said, okay, come with us. Come with me. However you want to deem it. Plural or a singular. I don't know. But when I did magic began happening in front of me that I had no control over. And if you find the faith and trust, and you find 
the silence in yourself to understand the knowledge which is written and encoded in such texts by such beautiful teachers as Jesus. And from within all of us, we can change the planet. And now's the time. Jesus told you, the man with the pitcher of water is here. All that's happening now is Christ waiting for you to go within and meet him in the house. And you all can, because it's free. Meditation and patience is achievable by everyone. Just got to practice at it until you get there. So, <laughs> right. Anyway, I'm going to get off because it's getting very late and I'm very tired at the end of a long day. I just wanted to talk about that. Anyway, so, much love, guys. Bye. Bye.